at a first look, the robber fly might look like one of the scariest insects in the world. It makes sense. Their appearance is very unusual, and their hunting preferences are even scarier. Torpedo-like body, long legs, and a sharp proboscis. These guys are perfectly built insect killing machines. What you might not gather from your first look at this terrifying insect, though, is that they are extremely fun to catch, extremely docile in hand, or overall just easy insects to handle. The smaller species especially have no defense against you, as their proboscis is built specifically for hunting down insects, not for biting you. And plus, look how cute and fluffy this little guy is. Who wouldn't want to hold one of these? Alright, now let's go through the steps for how to safely catch and handle robber flies. Alright, so the first step in making sure that you can catch and handle and experience robber flies for yourself is to make sure that you're in the right habitat during the right kinds of times. So here in South Florida, all of the robber fly species that I see most of the time occur in these sandy scrub habitats with pine trees, lots of dried plants at the bottom, lots of palm trees, vines growing. This kind of habitat right here, the Florida scrub, is where I see all different kinds of robber flies from Afaria, Megaphorus, Proctocanthus, so many different genera, Amadeus, and um, I just saw one flying. So also you're going to be wanting to be out during the right time. The majority of the robber flies here come out during these hot sunny days and they will perch near the ground or on the ground on these dry shrubs, tall grasses, short palm trees, stuff like that. So the best way to find these guys is to go slightly off trail but also don't really disrupt the habitat. So try and shuffle through these kinds of spots and eventually you might scare one up from its perch. They could be really hard to spot while they're perching. But if you shuffle through the right spots, you might spook one out of its perching spot. Right here is this Megaphorus minutus, little robber fly. Ah, it keeps flying. Alright, there he is, perched. Right there, these could be a little hard to keep track of, but let me see. Oh, well that was an easy catch. Right down here, I have myself an Afaria apicalis female. She is perched right on the branch, right in the middle of the frame, if you could see her right there. This is a female Afaria apicalis. Now this is going to be my target for trying to show you how to catch these guys, because she is just sitting right in the perfect spot for a catch. Alright children, so right here I have my net. And this net is pretty small and nice and rectangular, so it allows for a good surface area while still not being too large to not be able to handle. As you can see she just went right out into the open so now I could easily see her while trying to calculate where to put my net down. So keep an eye on her real quick and be very quick with this motion. Got her. So you can see her wiggling around in there now. Now this net is black and very very thin fabric so you could still see exactly where she is the whole time. As you can see, she's right there. Alright, as you can see, we have moved to a spot where there's more shade. But don't worry, I still have her in the net so you can see what I'm doing. So, first what I'm going to do is grab her very gently by the body. Now as you can see, I'm wrapping the net so there's very little mobility for her. So I'm going to grab real quick, very very gently as you can see. I'm barely putting any pressure. Now I'm going to wrap the net inwards and as you can see she is popping out of the net very gently without touching the wings pick her up by the legs. Now I have to maneuver her just a little bit 
just a tiny bit. And now, she is sitting comfortably in my hand. Now, robber flies, despite their notorious predatory habits, actually don't bite when I'm holding them. And you can see their sharp proboscis, not even, not even thinking about using that on me. Robber flies are very good in hand. As you can see, she's just sitting there. <laughs> Alright, now that we have a robber fly in hand, let's take a look at some of the parts of a robber fly. Up close. So, as you can see on that face, that face is very cute. There's a lot of fluff. And that fluffy stuff is called the mistax. And that is special to robber flies. And that, f that hair covers the proboscis, which is that black spiny structure. Now, besides that, they have pretty much the same anatomy as other flies, with the scutum on the top of the thorax, the scutellum being that little bump at the back of the thorax, and just the normal legs and abdomen. Uh, males have what is called a genital bulb, and females have what is called an ovipositor that they use to lay eggs. So that's just the general anatomy of a robber fly right there. So I could tell this is a female Afari apicalis, because of her ovipositor right here. She has this long, thin structure at the end of her abdomen, and that's what she's gonna use to lay eggs. Ovipositor length and shape is a good tool for identifying females of the genus Afaria. So you can see, moving her legs a little bit there, that's about the only thing that they do to fight back, move their legs just a tiny bit. Um, Afaria females, their ovipositors are a great indicator, and her overall size, kind of yellowish leg, uh, middle leg color, as well as that ovipositor, size and shape, should mean that this is either Afaria apicalis or Afaria tabicens, which are almost identical as females. Um, I have read that Afaria apicalis tends to have shinier black at the end of the abdomen. So not the ovipositor, but the very last segment, as you can see, right there, pretty shiny black.